Hi guys, welcome to my show, my video. This is Raj Sau, founder of Christ First, an online Paul free church and hence a cancer free church because Paul was a deceiver. We do not teach him. We founded this church in the month of June. Right now I am in, that's in California we founded. I have of Lancaster, it's an online church, Lancaster, California. Right now I'm in Goa, as some of you may know, I've been here for a bit and plan to stay a little more enjoying the warm weather and tropical Hawaii of India, Goa. On the western coast of India, overlooks the Arabian Sea, beautiful sprawling white sand beaches, what not, very nice. Alright, enough of Goa. Guys, I'm recording this video at the behest of the Lord God. If you will to, if you wish to believe that. However, when you go through the video, you'll understand that it is from him because he's trying to explain through this video who are the righteous mentioned in the Bible. For those of you who are uh, familiar with the Bible and have read Bible few times, you will come to a conclusion that uh, the salvation belongs only to the righteous. It's all about righteous getting everything from the Father, Father God. Against the righteous are the sinners, the wicked, really. Because we all have certain amount of sin. We will cover that. The wicked people are not going to inherit nothing. Even if they believe in Jesus or otherwise, they'll get nothing. Now, I put abundance of videos, huge numbers, probably exceeding 100, which decisively proved with clenching evidence Paul was a deceiver. He, oh, he himself confessed umpteen number of times way after his conversion that he was a deceiver, who had crafty deceiver who had come with the express purpose to deceive. Please go through my video because I'm not going to focus on that deceiver, devil Paul, but who are the righteous? Coming back to the crux of the video, who are the righteous who will be saved? Do we know that? Is it in the Bible? Did the Savior of mankind tell us? Did he reveal who are the righteous who are mentioned throughout the Bible, Old Testament and New Testament? It belongs to them. Nobody else will be saved except the righteous. So who are the righteous? Now the Pauline churches will jump in, jump up in excitement. It's imputed, it's imputed. Whoever believes will be saved. So I'm going to contrast that with what Jesus taught. And it's dramatically different. Outrageously different. So please bear with me and have patience. We'll go through that. Okay, guys. So give me a minute. Let me get that. Guys, uh, I'll take you to uh, God Quest. Have you heard of God Questions or GodQuestions.com? A very popular Protestant church website which robustly defends the gospel of Jesus Christ through the eyes of Paul. But Pauline, Pauline uh, doctrine followed by our churches which is nothing like what Jesus taught. Anyways, long story short, GodQuestions.com is a powerful website which defends the gospel of Jesus Christ as the Protestant churches taught. What do they say is the righteous? Let's go quickly through that, guys. I hope to finish this in less than 30 minutes. I typically am not able to keep my time frame, so I apologize if it exceeds that. I apologize, but it's important to understand who are the righteous who will be saved. By the end of this video, if you can have that much amount of patience, you will certainly know it, guys. It's all scriptural. I've extracted it straight from the Bible's mostly the words of Jesus Christ here, okay, which cannot be denied, right? Matthew 24, 35 says the whole universe can crash, burn and disappear. Jesus says every word will come good. So pay heed, pay attention, mull over it, ponder it. It's up to you, the rest. I can't force you. Hmm? God questions describes who are the righteous. So let's jump straight to that, okay? I quote now from GodQuestions.com The Bible describes the righteous person as just or right, holding to God and trusting in Him. Psalm 33, 18, 22, they've quoted. So, it Bible describes the righteous person as just or right, holding to God and trusting in Him, which is so true. Psalm 33, 18, 22. And then they say this, God Questions, which is 
This is you can imagine all of these protests. If in fact every one of them is teaching this, because they say that's the bad news. The bad news is that true and perfect righteousness is not possible. They say, which you will also probably think because we have all been conditioned. We have been conditioned with this kind of toxic doctrine. The bad news is that true and perfect righteousness is not possible for man to attain on his own. The standard is simply too high. It's not achievable. Then why was God even teaching us to be righteous? Guys, think of that. The good news is that the, then they add the good news. <laughs> the good news is that true righteousness is possible for mankind but only through the cleansing of sin by Jesus Christ and the indwelling of the Holy Spirit we have no ability. It's, they say, see these are self-defeating statements. We have zero ability to achieve righteousness. We are good for nothing. We cannot be ever righteous. Look what Paul has taught. You and I have no righteousness. We cannot be righteous. Sounds like the devil to me. Don't you think so? Devil speaking. You are good for nothing. You can never be righteous. In by ourselves. But Christians possess the righteousness of Christ. Christians possess the righteousness of Christ. Who are these Christians? Did Jesus call any one of us Christians ever? In his lifespan? Nope. But Christians possess the righteousness of Christ. It's like oh, we have his righteousness. Yay. Because God made him. With no sin to be sin for us. So Jesus became sin for us. Mm, look at this doctrine of devil. So that in Jesus we might become the righteousness of God. Second Corinthians 5.21 Paul who else? And then they say this is an amazing truth. Because they don't want to fall, obey God's eternal laws. They killed it at the behest of Paul. And now they want to do this. Just believe. And get the righteousness of Jesus imputed to them. And this is called it an amazing truth. Of course, friends, it's an amazing truth. Go and send to your heart's content and believe you're saved because you've got Christ imputed righteousness. Sorry, this kind of gets me going. This is nothing but heresy. And you'll realize it by the end of this video. And they call it an amazing <laughs> truth. On the cross, Jesus exchanged. <laughs> so funny now that we know the whole truth. Exchange our sin <laughs> for his perfect righteousness so that we can one day. So he took our sin and gave his righteousness. To <laughs> so that one day we stand before God and he will not see our sin. <laughs> but the holy righteousness of Jesus Christ. <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> much too funny so far so far like heavens from earth that far anyway i think i'm on time seven minutes 55 seconds i'm keeping an eye on the clock this means that we are made righteous in the sight of god that is we are accepted as righteous and treated as righteous <laughs> abundance of righteous just by believing right <laughs> So did the demons also believe. That's why James got furious, the brother of Jesus. So what? If you believe, demons also believed. Christians could never explain to me what is the difference between them and demons for both believe in Jesus. <laughs> Imagine demons being the most righteous cre cre creatures on earth. <laughs> James was furious. Read his book, especially chapter 2 of James' book. James was brother of Jesus on earth. So we are accepted as righteous and treated as righteous by God on account of what Christ has done. They want to take no responsibility at all. Put everything on Jesus and blame it on the devil. But that's it. We are not responsible for nothing. On the cross Jesus was treated as if he were a sinner. Though he was perfectly holy and pure. And we are treated as if we are righteous. He was treated as sinner. We are treated as righteous though we are defiled and depraved. This is way too funny. On account of what Lord Jesus has endured on our behalf, we are treated as if we, are, we have entirely fulfilled the law, eternal law of God and had never become exposed to its penalty. <laughs> Look at even a fifth grader will laugh as heartily. Thank, thank you, gotquestions.com. I didn't intend to laugh like this, but <laughs> this is even a fourth grader will they'll start laughing at this ridiculous passage. I mean, their explanation. So we have received this precious gift. <laughs> 
of righteousness from the God of all mercy and grace. Grace is a word Jesus never ever uttered from his mouth. Check the whole Bible, any translation. <laughs> so there it gets tossed out, Paul's deception, because Jesus didn't even utter the word grace. So they say you are saved by grace through faith and all the righteousness is imputed. So to him be glory. With this they conclude. Happy. Let's go home happy and have some good food and let's do some more sin. We are covered by the blood of the lamb. <clears throat> okay. This is one part of that. Let's see what does the Lord Jesus have to say. Okay. Just give me a minute and we will jump straight to. Because guys, remember. Let me throw, cast out all this nonsense out of the window. Paul's uh, doctrine. Jesus says six times even before uh, ascend, just before ascending the cross on the last supper if you love me keep my commands if you love me keep my commands you are not my friends if you are not keeping my commands then elsewhere he says why do you call me lord lord I do not do what I command you it's all about obedience guys but these guys as you just said nothing to do just believe in all the righteousness no no it's not going to happen to keep the video short, let us jump straight to the last day vision Jesus gave, which the Protestant church has conveniently either ignored or hidden from you, as they hid from me. I'm also part of Protestant church. I've sold tea and coffee. I've cast away trash bags into the dumpster. I've done a lot of work in the churches, guys. I've invested a lot of years. My youth really in the church from 2005 to 2017 when I discovered there was a huge deception and we were being taught the devil's doctrine of deception of Paul. D, 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 devil's doctrine of deception taught by Protestant churches who relied on this fake apostle. In fact, he was an apostate, a heretic, Paul. But I had, wait, from that time till now, I've been doing a lot of study. This is the product, or the fruit of that, okay? A lot of due diligence, heartbreak, Heartbreaking study and sacrifice is involved here. I lost my family, my wife and children bailed on me. They left me because I was, had gone crazy. Paul, Paul, Paul. Of course it is. It's a 2000 year old problem going on. Nobody caught that. So to catch that and to place it in front of you requires a lot of work. So pay attention now. Now you already know Jesus says, if you love me, keep my commands. It's all about obedience. You're righteous by what? Obedience. Obedience to God's law. He says in Matthew 7, 21 to 23. What does he say? Not one of you will enter the kingdom of heaven unless you do the will of God. Understand this, guys. Nobody can be saved. Nobody in this universe unless you do the will of God. Jesus says that again in Matthew 4, verse 4. Man does not live on bread alone but on every word which emerges from the mouth of God. He's talking about every word you have to live. Then why were Protestant churches teaching us this nonsense heresy? Oh Paul said who's this bloody Paul then? The 13th apostle who could never have been. Jesus never mentioned this man. In fact in the uh, book of Revelation there are when the new Jerusalem comes down there were 12 uh, foundations with the 12 names of the apostles. One apostle was missing in action. Who is this 13th apostle? Paul. Where did he come from? The man says. Who says in 2 Corinthians 12, 16. The crafty fellow. I Paul am. I trapped you church by deceit. Or deception. This man. All right. So guys. Let's come back. To <clears throat> who's, who's the righteous? Who's the righteous man? Who will be saved? According to Jesus. When he's telling us that you have to do the will of God, it gives you an it, it gives you a clear indication. Only ones who will do the will of God are the righteous who will be saved. If you go throughout the Old Testament, <clears throat> Father God repeatedly warns, and He is the numero uno, the master, the supremo of the universe is Father God, not Christ. Christ is holding His power of attorney. Matthew twenty eight eighteen twenty, the High Commission. All authority has been given by the Father to me on heaven and earth. So make disciples of all nations, teaching them to, uh, baptizing them in the name of Father, Son and the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded and then I shall be with you till the end of the ages. 
so he's holding a power of attorney of whom father god what did father god says whoever if you want to live if you want that breath he put in the nostril of our ancestor adam if you want to breathe that breath guys you have to obey the eternal the magnificent the pure the just law of god perfect it is called quickly i'll say because it will it will go to one hour and some of you will say raj you talk too much but who will explain all this we are we have been buried under deceptions after deceptions and heresies upon heresies takes few minutes to explain right so <clears throat> let me what i'm saying is if you if we want to breathe the air father god put in the nostril of adam see there was a covenant from there on and adam broke that covenant we he won't let us uh, live guys that's the deal father god won't let us live unless we walk in obedience do the will do the will means to obey all his commands his decrees his statutes everything that's what jesus says matthew 4:4 every word we have to live on every word which proceed from the mouth of god i'll take you to mount sinai read that i think it's a uh, exodus 5 or where god speaks from the mount of uh, sinai to us nation of israel which is for us also it came to us also that's an eternal covenant all the 10 commandments all the law unless we obey and walk in obedience it's not going to happen don't deceive yourselves or don't get deceived guys but jesus taught us how to obey the whole law and the teachings of the prophets and the statutes and the decrees and everything jesus taught he taught us but why have we ignored all this it just boggles my mind sorry the power there's a problem then it goes on inverter and then then you'll see that the light and dark just focus more on what i'm speaking rather than the lights and stuff it's going back and forth he taught us jesus taught us how to obey the whole thing the entire law and the teachings of the prophets but these things were ignored i will take you to that passage where you will see but i'm giving you a background backdrop of all this that unless we obey everything we will not be deemed righteous because rather than blessings the wrath of god comes upon us when we reject his law or break his law and do not walk in obedience he is not interested in giving anybody a shred of life nothing <clears throat> excuse me on the flip side he is going to attack us brutally if he is famous for his love and compassion is equally known for his wrath it's massive huge humongous wrath is like an all destructive force which will destroy everything sinful i was the law given to prevent us from sinning and turn to what love kindness compassion and righteousness you will understand all these so you will wonder how can we obey the entire law everything it's impossible but of course that's what the protestant churches have convinced us ignoring what jesus taught here i would like to address some of my friends <clears throat> marty corzad brenda these guys are warriors of the lord some others jose others they are fighting valiantly for the lord to prove that this man paul was a deceiver and they've done wonderful job please check their videos brenda marty corzad del tondo jose what is the difference is they are talking about keeping the sabbath and uh, obeying law one after the other there are too many laws it's just not the 10 commandments and god wants everything fulfilled not just one or two or 10 you know honor everything honor everything you read in the new test uh, old testament of father you have to he is the boss he is the supremo he is the don corleone of the universe but it, if you feel that it's impossible to obey everything you're right you're right i concede that then you have to see what jesus taught and it's dramatically different than what the church is taught they taught pauline doctrine but jesus taught something else to fulfill that i'll come to that okay guys he says that in matthew 22 37 40 
what does he say when somebody asks what are the two greatest commandments of father god the law what does he say love god with all your keep this and let it go in deep in your mind love your love god with all your heart might and soul and love the neighbor as yourself when you do that you neighbor would mean the fellow human being when you do that you keep the entire law and the teachings of the prophets do you see how jesus was telling us to fulfill the entire law i'm not saying to not honor it try your best to honor as god taught but to completely like a done deal love god love the fellow human being he repeats that in matthew 7:12 you check out the golden rule do to others as you would want them to do to you for this is the law he says it very clearly this is the law and the prophets <clears throat> everything is condensed and like it it is um, completed rather in this when you do to others what do we want others to do to us love and respect us so jesus says go and love and respect others also this has a deep connection i'll give you another as a side in this bonus <laughs> that it's it's to fulfill god's um, principle and law and rule which is paramount to understand you you shall reap what you sow job told us he experienced it he understood it he taught us that job you shall reap what you sow this is throughout the new old testament next time you read this remember what i am telling you people will get only what they've given because god is god of impartial justice he is very neutral guys you will judge yourself your deeds will judge he jesus says do not judge lest you be judged and the measure you use i shall use against you and he, jesus again wants in revelation my recompense is in my hands and i shall give to each one of you according to what you have done he forgets that what paul taught faith and believe nothing of that crap that deception and that heresy i'm furious at our churches for deceiving us for 550 long years since this protestant churches came into being what happened before that i have no clue we didn't have the bibles nobody could check anything catholic church did not share it they couldn't probably plus i i don't know much about catholicism but i don't think they did justice either so here we are stuck with this pauline deceptions right it's all about recompense you shall get what you do or do to others that's why jesus says now are you connecting the dots love god love the fellow human being why so that on the day of judgment you get love back from whom god why because you gave love don't you see guys you will only get back what you've given it's a poetic judgment justice poetic justice because you will just get back what you've given to others and so you will reap what you've sown it's going to be very accurate and with almost god will have no part to play who will play the biggest part you know you you means i also i am part of that you i am in the same boat you and i will get what we had sowed or sown i don't know the english word most appropriate grammatical english word we will get what we sowed here or sown here we have sown here that's exactly what we're going to reap on the day of judgment it's going to be very poetic and very impartial and there will be no appeals nothing because by that time we had billions of option uh, opportunities to do good if we did not then what what will you do arguing understand i think you're getting a drift of who the righteous are they are the ones who sowed well made good choices see our god is righteous jesus once says that righteous father throughout old testament psalms it describes him as righteous he will never tolerate any unrighteous person entering his sanctuary no matter what we believe what we had faith imputed righteousness nothing is going to happen you will be now understanding this in full extent when i read out the last day judgment our messiah is a very good messiah teacher and a judge he's giving us advance notice who's going to be saved and what criteria slash metric will be used on the day of judgment let's jump to that thank you
Matthew 25, 31-46, also called by some as the goats and sheep. It's a judgment day version, which will play out word for word. As I keep telling, reminding, even warning, Jesus' words are not going to change. They will happen yet, no matter how much you debate with me or anybody else with yourself. It's yet going to happen, guys, word for word. Best is to accept it. Why debate? This is Jesus telling you and me. Let's hear what the Christ is telling us, our Messiah, our Savior, our Lord, God, Master, Jesus. When the Son of Man, I'm going to read out and I'm trying to keep 35 minutes as the highest uh, in like the time frame. When the Son of Man comes in His glory, Jesus is giving us an advance intimation. This is going to happen. A heads up, if you will. When the Son of Man comes in His glory and all the angels with Him, He will be sitting on His glorious throne. It's going to be a beautiful sight and scary and intimidating as well. Because on that day only we will know who was saved and who is not. Till that time it's all uh, speculation, nothing else, and conjecture, nothing else. That day we will come to know, that moment which is waiting to happen. All the nations will be gathered before Christ and He will separate the people one from the another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will make two groups, sheep and goats. There and then we will know who was saved, who is not. Many are invited, few are chosen. So less will be saved. Remember that guys. He will put the sheep on his right. Some he will say, come stand here next to me on my right. I will be very scared, terrified guys. I don't know where I will end. And on his left will be the goats. He calls them goats, the ones who are on the left. Then the king, that's Jesus, will say to those on his right, Come, who are blessed by my father. Now pay a lot of attention, guys. Throw away every thought in your mind. It does not matter or compare to this important thing which determines our future, eternal future. Understand what the Messiah is saying. You will understand who is the righteous person also. He is leaving nothing to imagination or speculation or guess. Nothing. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance, the kingdom, prepared for you since the creation of the world. He's saying it was always for you. Heavens was always made for you, tells the sheep. We have to know who the sheep are. And then he tells us, the Lord Jesus tells us, For I, when I was hungry, you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. Then the righteous, yeah, the cat is out of the bag. I get the goosebumps, guys. That's Matthew 25, 37, write it down. Uh, pause my video, write this down. Matthew 25, 37 tells us who are the righteous. Cat is out of the bag. If you want to reject Jesus, what can I say? Then what is left in Bible? Nothing. <clears throat> Jesus is saying, churches didn't catch that. He gave, is giving all this through a failure called Raja, who has failed in everything in his life. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, these guys, the sheep will say, they were surprised, really? <laughs> when did we do all this? You're telling us when you were hungry, we fed you. When you were naked, we clothed you. We didn't. They didn't even see him. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry, feed you, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison that we visited you? They were genuinely surprised. You know what Jesus says? Truly I tell you. Whatever you did for the least of these brothers of mine, his heart is only for the poor, destitute, broken, homeless, poor people. Truly I tell you, whoever, whatever you did for the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. That's the gospel of Jesus. When we turn away from our self-absorption, selfishness and look at others, just like the good Samaritan. That's why Jesus said, says, do likewise to us. It ends in this, in that checkout. Luke 10, 25, 37. I will not read 
it's a homework for you check it out you'd be the good samaritan he says in the end this is what he says when i needed clothes you clothed me and whatever i needed like these poor people you did for me right truly i tell you whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine you have done for me they had actually done for jesus unknowingly when we go out and help others who are in need who are destitute poor needy broken we are doing it for christ he said they were the good samaritans these guys the sheep and we have to be that if we want to be saved get that they are the ones who are being called righteous who the good samaritans can this be changed mhm i don't think so you can argue and argue away to glory debate day and night you won't convince me you can convince each other i cannot be convinced this is what the messiah is saying these are the righteous he says that in matthew 25 37 very clearly guys please don't get deceived again and again and again you cannot change jesus's words even if you go to thousand scriptures as our churches went to somehow rationalize the crap of paul to the words in other verses don't do it this is going to happen because he said it there's nothing to guess here these are the righteous who the sheep why because they had gone out of the selfish selfishness or self concerns or self absorption whatever words and helped others they understood the pain they had compassion they had empathy they had kindness use the word guys this is what the messiah is looking for and these people who had the works deeds of loving kindness or kindness if you don't like the word love these are the ones who will be accorded an eternal place in the sanctuary of god they will become the children of god okay forever and ever this is why bible story was made project earth this will end new jerusalem will come down that is the bride of christ all these good samaritans will be the bride of christ the children of christ the wife of christ choose the word they are the children they are the heirs they will rule with him forever ever, ever what new project will come you think project earth was the last project <laughs> no guys it's a seven day project for god six days is it's only the six days 6000 years is but six days for god he is eternal he says that the bible 90 some 90 even peter says thousand years is of humans is but a day for god so in just six days this is wrapping up now judgment will occur the good samaritans will be saved do you have any doubt somebody else will be saved no jesus is calling them righteous see i took the cat out of the bag i kind of tore the bag into pieces <laughs> to let the beautiful cat out these are the good uh, the good samaritans were the righteous but just for a double confirmation i'll let you know once again in this story it's very important matthew 25 3146 but let us hear what does christ say to the ones he rejected or condemned then he will say to the ones on his left get out of my sight no i'm kidding he says depart from me <laughs> you who are cursed into eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels he will say to them depart out of my sight and straight into eternal fire my gosh for i was hungry and you gave me nothing now he provides why the reason when i was hungry you gave me nothing to eat when i was thirsty you gave me nothing to drink i was a stranger and you did not invite me in i needed clothes and you did not clothe me i was sick and in prison and you did not look after me so these guys i'm sure they must be blown shattered terrified shocked i don't know what else to say i would be i don't want to end up there guys why am i recording all this to give you a fair chance to understand what is the messiah teaching all this has been ignored by our great churches ask them why i'll tell you give you a hint to accommodate that bastard paul was jesus is smashing his doctrines to smithereens here he's crushing it decimating it rejecting it all that nonsense of believe and go to heaven then why is it not happening here do you know what these guys say 
it's very very interesting what does these guys try to save as a last ditch effort the goats who were rejected you know what do they say lord pay attention they are calling him lord and then what do they say the goats who were rejected when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or needing clothes or sick or in prison and did not help you what they saying is lord we didn't see you otherwise we would have helped you you know what does this mean they knew jesus that's why they are saying this if we would have helped you if we had seen you a hindu cannot recognize jesus they don't even know if he's a man or a woman a poor illiterate indian man doesn't know many buddhists may not be knowing athi some others in some parts of the uh, world where they are like living in tribes they don't know who's jesus this people knew they were christians guys and they called him lord another give away they were christians who were following what all in deception of believe and go to heaven they were not they thought it is not needed to do any acts of kindness nothing they were taught like you and i get it what how paul dug a trench for us a bottomless pit which leads to the bowels of hell that's where these guys ended up unfortunately i do not want you to end there this is what they said to in as a last ditch defense lord we didn't know if if they were like you when i we didn't see you hungry or thirsty the way we would have fed you provided water and clothes jesus will reply truly i tell you whatever you did not do now listen very carefully whatever you did not do for one of the least of these people god has is a god of great compassion and wrath like i said here he is saying I, he has great compassion for the poor needy helpless suffering people we don't care the richer people in this world but jesus his heart is more for them than the richer man it's very evident from bible and they had no works of loving kindness that is what jesus is looking for that is what bible was made that is all the teachings of the father throughout the old testament you see that jesus will never exceed the father's uh, law teachings test is a perfect representation of the father again i'll repeat truly i tell you whatever you did not do for the least of these people you did not do for me <clears throat> then the goats will go away to eternal punishment and the righteous second time guys to eternal life that's matthew 25 46 now second time did you get it the gist of bible the essence of salvation is this video he used the mouth of a very chronic consistent failure called raj sahu a hindu man who came to america in 2005 fell in love with the word of god and jesus christ and became a christian through the mouth of that failure he is telling you this it's up to you if you want to take it or leave it he is telling you twice now matthew 25 37 matthew 25 46 the righteous are the good samaritans who stepped out of their comfort zone self absorption selfishness felt the pain of others just like the good samaritan and who's the greatest good samaritans of all time not hard to guess jesus christ who healed and helped everybody who came his way finally died for all people and finally forgave even those who killed him brutally the greatest good samaritan is jesus christ ever born and if we do not reflect the christ by becoming good samaritans we will not be deemed righteous as jesus says all this is coming good these good samaritans gave grace to others did you get that 
what you had so they had sowed richly and they reaped heaven salvation for their deeds it was a no brainer had pauline distraction deception not if he had not infiltrated us he was allowed to test us we stumbled like adam stumbled with satan father of paul john 8:44 what we sow we shall reap will happen so well from today if you have not sown well practice kindness guys as they say kindness goes a long way yes all the way up to heavens god is looking only for kind souls these are the ones who will be the bride of christ who the good samaritans why because they had sown well they had uh, practice compassion and kindness even to others exactly as the good samaritan had done not only did they get back what they had so that's what's going to happen the wicked will get wickedness smashed on them in this case again this uh, begs the question were these guys wicked i don't think so these um, the goats who were uh, uh, rejected or condemned they had sin of omission they had failed to do it's not that they committed sin but they had the sin of omission they omitted doing the right thing they didn't do it in simple words even they will be condemned what about the sinners that's why peter says if it is difficult for the righteous to be saved what about the sinner no chance even the righteous will be put under magnified uh, magnified what do you call glass you know like a microscope all our sins will be on uh, <laughs> all our deeds will be on, under that microscope heavenly microscope and we shall get according to what we have done this word grace which is absent in jesus's vocabulary in the bible will be given grace will be given to those who gave grace to others the righteousness which emanates from the cross of christ is death who does it apply to to those who gave grace to others the good samaritans are you getting all this good stuff guys this is straight from god the lord jesus christ this is from the bible if you don't believe me that's fine hate me love me i i'm just a servant of god it's like i've come with a message please don't attack me like you know the messengers they used to go to the kings they had no part to play i have no part to play i'm just you can consider me as a pigeon they used to even have pigeon with carrying a, a balaam's donkey you can use any mouth animal's mouth or whoever that's all i am this is the truth this is going to play out give grace to others guys if you want grace on the day of judgment practice kindness stay within this triangle this hallowed triangle uh, beg your pardon rectangle what is that rectangle it has four sides to it right rectangle or think of a billiard table with four sides love truth righteousness compassion love truth righteousness compassion exist in this god is god of great wrath and he will not hesitate to devastate and destroy if he did not spare his own people who he loved with his heart and soul for sinning and disobeying his law he will not spare one of us you can fool and deceive yourself deceive others if you will but this will still play out and again as a reminder entire law and teachings of the prophets exactly as jesus taught matthew 22 37 40 luke 10 25 to 37 is met in what love god love the fellow human being why why did god teach us to learn to love because god is love what did john teach us whoever does not learn to love does not know god for god is love what does the psalm says is unfailing love how many times 260 times god is love and he wants us to reflect him and his son jesus who is love also like the father 
unless we practice loving kindness we cannot be saved secondly it when you learn to love you assimilate lot of good deeds guys good work it's all very scientific it all comes together beautifully and you'll be deemed righteous why because you turned away from your own self absorption and stuff and wickedness and practice kindness even to strangers you can imagine what kind of a person you will be to the ones who are around you when you are doing this to others that is what god wants and you will be given charge of his galaxies after this earth is done and destroyed and new jerusalem comes down you think it's over and we'll sleep for a billion trillions no of years you will be given a lot of work because now he knows that x y z let's say your name is john or let's say your name is jack or june or j judy you they he will say these people who i have saved are the ones who will always do my will trusted in little is trusted with more he will give you galaxies because now he is sure no matter what you will always do his will see god's universe is unlimited exactly as he is that's why he said what does he say the uh, harvest is great the workers are few <laughs> it's a universe he'll give you charge guys that's what uh, how can i say who will believe me but he gave me all that so i'm sharing it's this is a place from where he will pick up his children he planted two in the garden of eden adam and eve and he'll walk with hundreds of thousands who he will use to manage his galaxies because now he knows you will always do the will of god that's all he wanted and then we will be bursting with love compassion kindness and righteousness thank you guys said enough on this i hope you got the message i hope you got who is righteous again as a reminder matthew 25 37 matthew 25 46 clearly tells us who are the righteous thank you and god bless you bye